70% of people who take prednisone gain weight. That's a one large study of 2,500 people who took prednisone said. Hi, I'm Dr. Megan, your prednisone pharmacist, and I'm here to explain how prednisone causes us to gain weight. I personally took prednisone and I personally gained weight and it was not fun. And so I went on a mission to understand what's causing that weight gain. And so then we can figure out what we can do about it. So first of all, what in the world is prednisone? Once we understand what prednisone is, that helps us understand how it causes the weight gain. Prednisone is what's called a glucocorticoid or corticosteroid. And it also is a mineralocorticoid. Those are all really big scientific words, but essentially what it's saying is that prednisone is mimicking our body's naturally occurring hormone called cortisol. Cortisol is our stress hormone, and these hormones are responsible for keeping our body in what's called homeostasis or in balance so that we don't get too hot, too cold, too high of this or too low of that. We want everything to be just right, especially when there's an emergency of some kind. So if there's a famine or a war and there's lack of food or there's danger or there's a tiger chasing us, cortisol is there to keep us safe, to keep the balance of our energy and our ability to run away and hide and to find food and to eat that food is kept in balance. So now that we understand that prednisone exists because it's mimicking cortisol and cortisol exists because mother nature wants us to keep us in balance, that helps us understand when we take prednisone, we are taking a hormone like our body's naturally occurring hormone, but in a way higher amount. So naturally your body releases about two and a half milligrams equivalent of cortisol, equivalent of prednisone dose. Most people take much more than two and a half milligrams of prednisone. So if we're taking 20 milligrams or 200 milligrams, that's incredibly rare. That's why we're gaining weight because we're taking what naturally happens to save a life and we're 10 times or 100 times causing our body to change. And so now that we know that's what it's doing, first I'll just answer some frequently asked questions about prednisone weight gain. So first of all, how much weight gain? And one study showed that the average person gained four to 8% of their body weight. And these were people who were using relatively low dose of prednisone between five to 10 milligrams a day. And so they gained after one year, if they were a 120 pound person before, they gained somewhere between five and 10 pounds after a year of treatment at that lower dose. But the higher the dose, the higher the chance for the weight gain. So if you were like me and you started out at 60 milligrams, it's more likely you're going to gain weight. And the higher the dose over time means more chance for your body to accumulate weight. So when do you gain weight? Well, at first, your body is actually kind of shocked by all of this cortisol happening and it starts breaking down fat cells called lipolysis. It's not breaking down fat cells where you want it though. It's probably breaking down fat cells in the periphery, like your arms and your legs and your lymphatic system. It's breaking those down. And then, so that first few weeks, you might actually be losing weight. Then after about three weeks or more, sometimes it's not until three months of treatment, depends on your dose. That's when you'll see the weight gain. So that fat that was broken down in your arms or your legs, is redistributed. That means it's moved, taken from there and moved to your face, causing moon face, to the back of your neck and shoulder area called a buffalo hump. And the worst, well, I can't decide which is worse, moon face or the big fat belly. For me, it looked like I was pregnant again. And in men who have to look pregnant suddenly, nobody wants to go from a normal figure to suddenly fat here and fat here. One other, one person described it as looking like an egg on toothpicks because the middle area is gaining weight and the outside area is losing weight. So it's not only losing fat, but it's also doing a process called gluconeogenesis. Your body is turning protein in your muscles and proteins that are 
in your blood, turning those into glucose. So I mentioned that prednisone is called a glucocorticoid. Gluco meaning glucose. That was one of the first things that the scientists discovered about prednisone and cortisol and all of these steroids is that they change glucose metabolism. And so it's taking protein and turning it into glucose. Why in the world would your body do that? Well, if you are fasting, like some people do a keto diet or something, it's stopping your body from using the carbohydrates that are floating around because you don't have any left over. And it's taking from either fats like ketones, or it's taking from muscle proteins and turning that into sugar, glucose. And the reason it's doing that is because if you are being chased by a tiger or you're in a famine, there's no food available, or you're in a war and you need to run for your life, what do you need to do all that? You need energy and you need it quickly available. And so your body is taking all of these difficult to use storage things like fat and protein and turning it into glucose so that you can use it quickly to run away and hide, to do what you need to do to survive. This is cortisol is all about survival. And so the problem is when you're taking prednisone, you're not actually running away and hiding, right? Instead, you're taking it for your disease, your condition, your inflammation. Whatever purpose that you're taking prednisone for is not likely to survive a famine. And so you're left over with high blood sugar floating around in your system. That high blood sugar can eventually lead to diabetes or your body takes that high blood sugar and converts it into something called glycogen, which is available in your liver so that you can release it quickly to have more sugar. But your body doesn't know what to do with all this excess sugar. So some of it's converted to glycogen and some of it's converted back into fat, but it's moved to the wrong places, to our face and our bellies. Because there's so much spillover of sugar, your kidneys start peeing out sugar into your urine which can be a sign of diabetes. It actually is the definition of diabetes is when your urine has sugar in it. This is affecting our insulin, a hormone that regulates the use of sugar, glucose in our body. And so you're getting insulin changes such as high insulin. When you have high insulin and you're not using up the sugar properly, that can give you hunger cravings. So now, We have too much floating around, but we're also hungry, like getting these hunger cravings. And because cortisol is secreted when we're having an emergency, most likely you don't have the chance to sit down and prepare a really helpful meal and have lots of ingredients to, you know, stew that food for a long time and get all the nutrition out of it. Mother nature thinks, This person just has to survive. This person just needs to get out of this emergency. So I'm gonna tell those craving signals, just eat what you can and eat it fast because we're probably gonna have to run again, right? So it's telling you to crave easily digestible, fast acting foods, like what you'd get in Oreos, right? Simple sugars, fat, salt, all the good delicious things that your body is craving to get you through this emergency situation. And those are the worst things to make you gain weight too. Having all that high sugar and and nutritionally poor quality food that doesn't have all of the nutrients you need to sustain life. That's not high in the protein that your body's breaking down and turning into sugar, right? We need to be eating protein. It's not high in one more thing is your kidney is not only peeing out sugar, but your kidney is holding on to sodium. Sodium is also salt. You can think of it as like table salt, that's sodium chloride. And so your kidneys are holding on to sodium. When you have more sodium than its opposite, potassium, because your kidneys are telling your body, because it's holding on to sodium, it's telling your body to pee out the extra potassium. They have to have the right balance. 
And so it's you're getting rid of potassium. Well, high sodium is associated with bloating. So you're now retaining water and having that high sodium and extra fluid is causing water weight gain. And the water weight gain is making it harder for your heart to beat, having good blood pressure. So now, not only do you have high blood sugar, now you have high blood pressure too, which in an emergency makes perfect sense because you want your body to be able to pump hard enough to be able to run away, right? Like mother nature is not doing this just to make us feel miserable and have big round moon faces and big fat bellies. Mother nature is doing this because she wants us to survive, but we're hijacking her ability to save us, to take a prescription drug that's mimicking it and is causing all of these complications, these side effects. So now your heart is beating harder than it had to before. Your blood pressure is higher. So that means you're also getting potential heart disease complications like arrhythmias, your heart beating out of sync or too fast or things like that, because it's having to work so much harder to do what it used to be able to do without as much effort. And the hormone responsible for telling your kidneys to hold on to the sodium and get rid of the potassium and change your blood pressure, that's called aldosterone. And that's the mineralocorticoid part of prednisone. There are other hormones that are affected. I already mentioned insulin, cortisol, aldosterone. There's also one called leptin. Leptin is the hormone your body releases when you're full. It's giving you the fullness signal saying you're satisfied. You don't need to eat anymore. But when you're on prednisone, we get leptin resistance. So even though you might be getting higher and higher levels of leptin in your body's kind of ignoring those signals. You're not getting the message across. The messenger somehow isn't getting through. And so when you're taking prednisone, you might feel incredibly hungry, like I already mentioned, but not know when to stop eating because this hormone of satiety, the hormone telling you you're full, isn't sending its message properly. And so that's leading to fat storage as well. Another way that prednisone is causing weight gain goes back to the muscle changes. So I mentioned that prednisone is stealing from the muscles and turning that into sugar, right? The protein is becoming sugar. What else is happening is your bone is losing its mass as well. So we're losing muscle mass and we're losing bone mass. And the bone is losing collagen and it's losing calcium and it's losing the structural integrity that's keeping it strong. Essentially, Mother Nature is stealing from these reserves. You've had this savings account of, of these important nutrients in your bones and your muscles that you've been building up throughout your life. And now that you're in this emergency situation, it's time to steal from the rainy day fund, right? To use up that rainy day amount of you know money that you have. But if you hear somebody say, I have a high metabolism, what they're saying is that their resting metabolic rate is high, that just sitting doing nothing, they burn through calories. And that's because they might have high bone mass and high muscle mass. And those are using up calories on their own, just sitting there and having muscles and bones active, just having them there. They're turning over and using things normally. But when on prednisone, we've stolen the mass from both of the bones and muscles. And so your resting metabolic rate might have been here before prednisone, but you've lost mass. So now your baseline amount of calories that you're generally using on a daily basis has gone down, but you're eating the same or more, most likely more than you were before. So you're gaining weight because you're not using the amount of calories you normally would have just existing. Another way prednisone causes weight gain is through the mood changes. It's changing the way our brain is working, the way it's perceiving threats. So if you were in a war and you're feeling like everything's an emergency, you know, you hear a car backfire and that might be a gunshot, or you're afraid somebody's following you, your perceived level of threat has gone up. Your fight or flight response is heightened to save your life. It's awesome. But it means that your 
ability to deal with normal life events in a healthy way is decreased. So for example, somebody cuts you off on the freeway, the amount of time and your ability to deal with that, just like, oh, they're probably having a bad day. They're, maybe they're rushing to the hospital to help their wife deliver a baby. Who knows? Like your ability to deal with that moment of stress has gone down. You're more reactive. Your reaction time to negative stressful events is cut down. You have a short fuse while on prednisone. And so you're using up all of your willpower to just deal with normal life and the people around you. And there's not as much willpower left at the end of the day to deal with hunger cravings and the urge to binge on food. And so it's also just the fact that you can't process your emotions the way you normally would. Prednisone causes more psychosis, anxiety, uh, depression, and other things than normal. And so you might have a normal, really good emotional health, but while in prednisone, your mood or your emotions your mental health might be impaired in some way. And so that's impacting your ability to make healthy food choices and to resist the urge to binge and eat the foods that your body is craving. Next, the number one side effect of prednisone that people tweet about on Twitter, which is now called X, is called insomnia or sleep deprivation. Prednisone is renowned for its ability to change your circadian rhythm and make you have a harder time either falling asleep, but mostly staying asleep at night. You might have more nightmares and have more vivid dreams because of this heightened sense of urgency and vigilance for your safety. And so it's well documented that quality sleep leads to quality appetite and quality eating, whereas poor sleep is more correlated with craving and eating foods that aren't as good for you, that you're more likely to eat Oreos if you had a poor night of sleep the night before than if you got a good night's sleep, that they tested people and that the people with worse sleep made worse food choices. So all of these are conspiring to make it harder to not gain weight, that prednisone is working in so many different ways from head to toe affecting your ability to cope with temptation and at a microbiological level is actually moving your normal, healthy, balanced muscle and bone body into conserving fat and moving that fat, redistributing it to your face and your belly. And so it's not your fault that you're gaining weight while in prednisone, most people do. But if you're wondering if there's anything you can do about it, I have good news. You're not doomed. It's not inevitable. There are people who figure out exactly how not to gain weight while in prednisone. And I've documented the top seven mistakes people make while in prednisone in my free downloadable prednisone checklist. It goes through each of the seven mistakes and what you can do to avoid making those mistakes so that you can feel like yourself again, not gain so much weight and come back to the way you felt before taking prednisone so that you can feel healthy and strong and look like yourself again. I I remember seeing my reflection in the mirror and thinking, who is this? And then having my face ID on my phone not recognize me because my face had changed so much. So if you're struggling with this, I encourage you to download my prednisone checklist to find out exactly what you need to do to feel like yourself again while taking prednisone. Just fill out the form by clicking the link below and it'll go straight to your email and you can print it off and follow all the steps to know exactly how to feel like yourself again while in prednisone. Signing off as Dr. Megan, your prednisone pharmacist. 